Hey guys, so we live in a little house that's under five shade trees, zero light. So my cute little lights here, or my cute little windows here are not going to make any difference to plants that I am trying to get started in here. I'm trying to get some herbs started and just kind of get back into the rhythm of planting things. I like to always be growing something because then it's like my senses are more aware of my plants if I'm always growing a little bit of something rather than if I take a long break from growing things. Now originally I was kind of wanting to set this up in the bedroom because we already had a four foot shelf in there. The problem is it would be with a lot of computer and electronic equipment and also John does have his studying space that he needs to have and he needs shelves for it and it just felt like the dirt and the water was not a good combination with a bunch of computers. And this spot right here, there's a lot of vertical space that isn't being used. None of the kids were home. None of the kids were home. I'm sorry. Close the door. Okay, so mommy moment. So this is a space with a lot of vertical open area that is not being used except for a super cute cow picture that I found at the secondhand store. Um, so the reason I love these shelves um, is that I can use them for food storage. They're heavy duty enough to use for food storage. They're easy to clean up. I can put anything, I can take them from food storage and then use them for grow lights and then I can change them up and I've actually kept rabbits in them before by having caging around the side. Yeah, I've used them for everything. I like to get mine from Target because they are heavy duty but they're also inexpensive. Um, I could have put the money into hardware and into wood and it would have been nice but because I'm in a rental I'm trying to make everything movable and not permanent and make as few holes as possible and I have used grow lights for a lot of years. I've used some really nice, um, expensive grow lights in the past as well. And I found that they, they didn't necessarily do better than the regular fluorescent bulb lights, um, except that you had to be really careful to keep a certain amount of space between the plants and the lights because that really expensive grow light would actually burn the plants. Whereas with the fluorescents, they can touch the lights and they're fine. Okay, so this is the one that we got. It's a shop light T8, and I only got one. My mom likes to set up a, du a double set of lights, but I thought I'd go really cheap first. With these ones, you can put the light down very, very close to the um, plants. You're not going to burn them with the light bulb. And so, you, you know, if it could be enough, it might not be, but it could, one light might just be enough for a single row of plants. It might, might not be. I don't know. That one's just the kitchen sink. You want it that low? Yeah, it has to be that low. These are not real strong light bulbs. Yeah, they're open. Yeah, but we'll let, like open good so yeah. that people can get into it. You can get fully into it. Yeah. A bell ringing clang. Okay, so again, I'm excited that this does not have mercury in it or glass. And so having little kids in the house and um, if, we're, if we end up moving again, it would be really nice to be able to take things with me instead of worrying about whether or not I was going to have mercury on everything if we did. So. Can I drop them? You need adapters and ballasts for LEDs. Ha uh ha! -huh. Interesting. Very, very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so Daddy just spent the last and little, little bit, little bit, figuring it out because the circuitry oh. needed to be changed. Con everything had to be changed in order for these LEDs to work, rather than regular fluorescents. So they work now. Super excited, but it's been a bit. Mm -hmm. So and we're not going to explain how to rewire because it's a little. There's enough liability yeah. there that it's not like we want to really play with it. So. But I'm excited. It looks like it's totally going to work. So. And I'm sorry we don't have better lighting. Oh no, we have. No, lighting. now we have amazing lighting. Yay. Also, these are site specific. One side is uh, the side that will activate it, one side is not. Ta da! Ta da! And Good. it's like daytime now. There's our blinding light. Yeah. Is this extra? Can I have this? Yes, you can have it. I'm not going to rewire it. I'm not going to rewire it, but I am going to stick the wire through. Is that okay? I could do it underneath the lights, but they kind of get in the way if I turn them on and they shade everything if they're not turned on So um, we're just gonna do it here in the washer. I do love a kitchen where the washer and dryer are in the kitchen It feels like I can get everything done at the same time. I can cook and do laundry And I don't know if you can see or not, but the girls are doing school right here So everything is central it makes my life so much easier. I think I'm a lot more laid-back when I'm in this kind of space I have anchored the shelf to the wall in three places because Without that extra shelf lining it up on the bottom, it is less stable than it could be. And John is getting me some uh, bumpers on the walls here in the kitchen, in the I guess in the living room, dining room. Um, because I have a chair that's bumping against the wall and I want it to stop bumping against the wall. And also we have some Thank you, Hero. He's putting the strips right here so that we can put coats on them because I like these cells that are smaller because as the plants grow, they're going to need more soil anyway. But when they're first germinating, they don't need very much soil. And they also don't need any fertilizer. They're kind of like a chicken that they come with their own food source built into them. And it's not until they put out, their, I think it's their first true leaves, that they actually need fertilizer. So this potting mix, even though it has like a six month fertilizer in it, the seeds don't need that until they put out their first leaves. Their first true leaves. Not the round little baby leaves that they have when they first sprout. Thank you, Paige. You're welcome. He wants, he wanted me to get skirts. So this time of year is a good time to start herbs and onions because they take a long time to get to maturity. The onions will just pack in and you can tear them off and put them in a new pot and pack them in and, and you can just keep growing them until you're ready to plant them. Same thing with herbs, it takes months for them to come to size. So now's the perfect time to do herbs. 
My favorite herb to plant is Tulsi Kapoor. It smells like heaven. It, smell, it literally smells like what heaven would smell like if it smelled like Tulsi Kapoor. It's quite fluffy. So you put the seeds in without pressing it down like that, and then you press it down, and then you put a little sprinkling of dirt over the top. And with really tiny seeds, a lot of time you have to water with the squirt gun. And sometimes with this, in fact, I know with this because I see little wood pieces, you'll get slivers if you're using potting soil a lot. So there's gloves that are called, I think they're called naked gloves or bear gloves. I don't, don't remember which. Bear gloves, I think. Is it bear gloves? I thought it was naked. I'm pretty sure it was naked. Anyway, they're, they're little rubbery gloves that, that actually let you still pick things up and they're really nice and they'll keep you from getting those little wood slivers. And yes, this is definitely a messy sport, which is why I'm doing, I like doing it in the kitchen. Again, I love that everything is in the kitchen. And I got some curtains put up. I should show you the curtains. I got these curtains made last night because um, I don't remember why I decided that that was when I needed to make them, but I got them made. And we got these curtains here. That one we made because the blinds actually broke and I didn't want to bother the landlord to, to try and get new ones. It was easier just to make curtains that matched. Okay, so I'm gonna try and bring you in. I don't know how good my lighting is gonna be, so this might be tricky. Okay, so I wanted to show you how many kind people there are in the world. These are seeds that have been sent to me um, or given to me when we traveled. Um, and so that's how many I have to pull from. Some of them were taken from um, like discount stores and stuff like that, but some of them are quite new or they're heritage that somebody else made. I have seeds from um, Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. I have some from a friend that sent them through the mail. And then I have some, I believe, from just so Trish, I have some cantaloupe seeds. I have so many different amazing seeds. So perlite is important because it keeps all of the peat moss or the wood mulch from packing down. The perlite leaves air pockets in there and little pockets for water to get into. Um, what I'm looking to do right now is herbs. And I don't remember which package I put them in. Okay, so red onions, any kind of onions are good to do now. I have quite a few onions. We use a lot of onions. Girls, get done. And you you pretty much just sprinkle the whole surface of whatever you're planting with your onions. Because they can be packed in as close as possible together. Again, one of the reasons I do it this early in the year is just for practice. I have so much planning to do later in the year that if I don't start practicing now to remember to water things, um, when I get to that time of year when I have everything growing, if I'm not in the habit, I will accidentally let things die because I haven't been practicing. I am tempted. You know, the weather here is nice enough during the day that I think I could put some of these in containers. I could put some of these in containers and then um, and then walk them in and out of the house. And I can put them quite close because tomatoes transplant very, very. So I am trying to get these off for so my dad. This one is too big, that's why it's not working. You need just a flat head. Cool. This is actually a file. See those edges? Mm -hmm. Put that down and get a flat head. You need a flat head screwdriver. Okay, so the seeds that I have are mainly from MI Gardener or Michigan Gardener. They have a YouTube channel. If you're interested in these seeds, I do have a coupon code below that saves you 10%. They're only 99 cents a piece anyway, but 10%, I mean, that's pretty awesome. I've used these for three years now in my greenhouse and outside of my greenhouse and under the lights. They germinate well. 
And I love that the packages are a little smaller. I don't feel like I have a lot left over at the end of the year, and instead I can I can keep my seeds rotated. They're really high quality. So um, the only thing is you need to buy them early on because they do run out about March. Everything's gone. And and so I had yes, I'm sorry. I was trying not to interrupt. I know. So I have two orders that I've made from them for this year. The first one was just that I had something to plant. And the second time was to get everything I actually wanted. So this is going to be is going to be all my herbs. And I have quite a few. So I have spicy glow basil. I plant basil next to all of my tomatoes and my peppers. Anything that has a tendency to have aphids on it, the basil will keep them away. I also like to plant lettuce underneath my tomatoes because it keeps them... It keeps... The, the ground shaded so that you're not losing as much water, but it's also keeping this lettuce shaded so that it's not overheating and bolting. So I really like to do that. I have wild bergamot, bee balm. I have Utah celery. I have ground cherry. Ground cherry does really well in containers, just even in the house. I have lemon balm. I have German, um, German chamomile can be made into a tea, but it can also be used as an accelerant for your compost pile. Common thyme, anise, chives, sage, oregano, cilantro, rosemary, stevia, and parsley. All those things can be grown in the house. They do well in containers. Yes, ma'am. Don Billy Blue. That's his name. Okay, you have Indian spelled incorrectly. Also, you have friend spelled incorrectly, and it really needs to be much longer. Why? Okay, and then my favorite herb of all time is Tulsi Kapoor. And if you want herbs, medicinal herbs, go to Strictly Medicinal. I think it's Strictly Medicinal Herbs. It used to be Horizon Herbs, but they've changed the name. I buy this in 10 gram packets. I I use a lot of this. I use it in everything that I send out that's Etsy until I run out. Um, I used to grow this tons and tons of it in the greenhouse and then halfway through our road trip I ran out which was really sad for me. I cannot find this actual herb anywhere to purchase as leaves. I have to grow it myself. So it's a holy basil. Um, Tulsi Kapoor. It's not like the other basils. It smells completely different and um, it's it's really amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and plant these. Generally they need to go on the top if because herbs are very tiny seeds but you still need to put something over the top so that when you water them they're not dying. A lot of times while I'm waiting for things to germinate, I will only bottom water. So I'll fill up the bottom of the container and let it water from the bottom instead of putting it on the top because any kind of rough watering on the top will kill really delicate seeds. They're just so tiny they can't help handle that kind of pressure from the top. So I, I bottom water or I use a spray mister. Yeah, I think that's a good spot. Maybe I don't know. I think it could be a little bit higher so that it's, yeah, so the bar's in the middle. And then I need to put some felt together to put on the bottom of the chair so they stop scraping the floor up. Okay, so last night our little uh, blinds broke, but I always use these blinds to make my sticks for my garden, so it's kind of good timing. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these down. You want to make sure that your shelf is even, otherwise you're going to have water cooling in one place and not enough in another. And I'm going to watch to see when it has absorbed the water, if it has too much water, too little water, and now I just get to keep my eye on it. I could put that clear tray on um, to hold moisture in. Um, that is a possibility, but I'm not going to.
Hey guys, today we are talking about growing greens in your window. Not microgreens, but it's just a different method. My mom is doing this, so we're going to walk you through the method that this guy puts out. And um, it's, fun, it's fun to do a video with my mom, so that was super fun. Make sure to go check out our hotbed video if you want to know about our other method of growing greens in the winter. It works really well and we've already done it so we can show you how to do it and it allows you to grow on a, on a bigger scale and let your vegetables grow to maturity. This is our new experiment. It can be called sprouts, it can be called greens, it can be called shoots. And didn't he call it um, soil grown seedlings? I think that was yes. one thing he, he called, called it too. called soil grown seedlings but I did not use soil. Okay. I. Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? And you can see if you get a side of what we've got here, you can take any of these out. And you did this differently. You did this in mats. I did this in mats. This is what I've got right here. And it's all clean. And there is no soil. You can just eat it, which I'm going to do. Okay, so and I have a question. Like yummy peas. When so. I read the book, he said that when they did just the sprouts, they didn't like the flavor, but when they did it in soil, that they their family felt more like they were a plant rather than just a sprout. Have you found that you didn't like the flavor as well? I do like the flavor better with soil. And sometimes you got to do what you have time for. Because let me show you what the real beauty is here. This is called a sprout master. And I have tried this in the past. And the little roots would go into these mm -hmm. little holes. Do you remember that, And get Julian? stuck. And get stuck. And then you get to take a paper clip or a pin and spend an hour. On each individual little hole. On each individual little hole. So this is my experiment. I got, I just cut this from a, you know, cutting board. Uh -huh. little a dollar, dollar store. Dollar yeah. store cutting board. I cut that. And then you can see it's got a little bit of biofilm on it, which means I need to be rinsing a little bit better. But then this is a grass mat, and it's biodegradable. And where did you get them? I got it from Sprout People. And that's a like SproutPeople.com type of a... Okay, so SproutPeople.org. They are the best. Okay. And this is what it looks like. And when you start... You cut it to size, and when you start your seed soaking, you also soak this in, and, and weight it down or it doesn't absorb the water. It takes, it takes an overnight for this to absorb the water. Okay. And the reason that, and they recommend that you put this on it. Seacom PGR? Yeah, and it's a kelp. Okay. They recommend that. And another, what my next experiment's going to be, and you can do a new video on that, is I'm going to use this. Procore. It, it's made from coconuts. And you just, that whole thing will do a, like a five-gallon bucket. Okay. And then you add this to it, a little bit of the earthworm castings, and you use that instead of soil. Do you have a copy of your book that I can show him? The, the other thing is is that he claims that all you need is a sunny window rather than grow lights. My mom doesn't have room in front of her, her um, south-facing sunny window, so she has it as just these very simple... These are not special tubes, right? They're just regular no, tubes? there's one warm and there's one cool. Okay. And it works as good as daylight and they're cheap. But I want to talk about what this is first. Yes. Okay. You see that we're getting our first leaf here? Mm -hmm, they're beautiful. Are they peas? These are lentils. Or are these peas? These are peas. These, these are look peas. like peas. Those are peas. These are peas and lentils mixed because I had some left over. Okay. So you'll see a mix here, and that's why some of them are tall and some of them are short. Okay. Because these are the peas and these are the lentils. Okay? And they're, they're really healthy. You put them about this close to the lights... So about, what, half an inch away? Uh-huh. And um, uh, do you want me to tell how you do it? Yeah. Okay. So you soak your seeds at least six hours, and the sprout people have all of those, all those charts for how long you soak things, and you look up individual seeds. 
this is just, this one is a pea, and this one is just simply whole peas, cheap, bulk whole peas, very cheap. It's part of my food storage. This is what I have for my greens, for my food storage, is this, and that, I'm learning how to do it. Do you know about how much power it, it takes? Because you have these on all the time, right? But you don't, no, I only have them on as long as the sun's up. And the reason that I am using this is because I want to start growing wheatgrass and juicing it because these cost $3 a piece and I know how to do wheatgrass and what I really want to do is wheatgrass in these. So I could juice what's in here. I could pull it all up and even juice, you know, what's the seed and everything that's in there. I could add some earthworm castings underneath this and I, I, which is probably what I'm going to do and just see what happens because I'm learning what works for me. I love the size of this tray. It's more manageable. The it water is, doesn't and get it's too heavy. Stiff. And, and I have used these before and I right. bought these uh -huh. to do it with and I decided not to use them because I'm having to carry them to the kitchen to, to rinse them. And this is rigid and it has its own little drain tray mm -hmm. underneath. Yeah. I got these at the thrift store, by the way. You are that queen. <laughs> and so, um, and then it has this, it comes with a bottom and it comes with a lid. So as soon as they're um, soaked, I'm putting them in here on the, on the grass mat and then they grew up like this. And when I took the lid off, they were about two inches tall and they were just as pale yellow as you would ever see. And then it took about two hours and they turned green. Wow. And so they would work in a window. What I'm going to try next, I picked these up at the thrift store too. And do you see these? And they, you'll yeah. see a lot of them in the thrift yeah. store. I'm thinking that this might work nicely with a little bit of dirt here and then that mat. Mm -hmm. And then, or I may put another false bottom with some holes in it. I don't know, but I love playing with this because these are cheap and they're so rigid and they're just the right size to get underneath the faucet and get them a, a really good rinse. Not so awkward. Not so awkward. And so this is where, what I'm going to. And see, the peas are different and they're a lot more tasty than the lentils. And How you can... How you much do see. you age them? How, how old do you let them get before you start to really harvest off of them? Well, that's really the trick. Because the most, the biggest mistake that people make when they're sprouting or sprout or shooting or, or uh, doing wheatgrass and stuff is that they don't taste it. Mm. So you're, you're asking me, when do you start eating it? <laughs> you taste and it I, all the time. I do this. And since this doesn't have any dirt I come in here and I eat this and I think these are delicious and they're just they're cheap and the pe whole peas store forever so this is I don't know I'm I'm quite in love with it so eat as you go until you find the time until that you, you think they're best you like it because it's not like you're gonna make that was a lentil and they're not as yummy and last time we were over for dinner you made a salad that had quite a few of these in them didn't it uh -huh, I did and it was a really amazing Excellent. salad. Excellent. And so you can see that these these are a little bit too close to the light. Okay. But it's not like a regular greenhouse light, so it won't burn them. No, it, it isn't. It's a little bit warm, but it won't burn them. And so these are you can see these are the lentils. And and to be honest, the reason that I grew lentils here and peas instead of wheatgrass was because I was too lazy to get my bucket open and soak the wheat and this was already in my cupboard and so I just took what was in my cupboard and put it to soak and look guys I got salad. And, okay so tell me about your, I already know about your uh, shelf but tell me, tell them about your shelf. Well I got this at Sam's Club and it's adjustable and I had uh, years ago I had the expensive uh, grow light system I think it was close to um, thousand dollars and I actually sold it and I prefer this yeah because it is um, so it versatile perfect. and it has the wheels and um, I love having the plastic here and I really don't think I'm gonna do more than just two lights I used to do like all right 15 
and I would do two of these trays and I would have 15 trays of wheatgrass going all the time so that I had wheatgrass to use every day. But I'm not going to do that. I think I'm just going to do one. It looks like enough to graze on if you're I think always... It's enough I mean, to you've graze. only got a few trays and, and this shelf isn't even full. And it's not even full. Can you show them how you raise and lower your light? Yes. It's, it's high tech. My husband did this one, so it's probably going to be tighter than I would be able to do it. And see, what I did is I put a zip tie through this little hole right uh -huh. here. That's a zip tie. Or you could use a little S-hook, couldn't you? No. Will I, it not I, fit? If you use an S-hook, it sometimes will slip through. It okay. comes with an S-hook, and I don't use it. I use a zip tie so that okay. I have a, a full circle, and I put that through the chain. So it's and not then, slipping. So it's not Brilliant. slipping. Brilliant. And I adore this. It is my most favorite setup, and I have tried them all. You and have. it's cheap, and if you have your trays underneath this, you're not having water, you water in the kitchen, and you don't have dirt. And I have done it with dirt, mm -hmm. and I don't want to do it with dirt. I'm willing to do, use a little bit of well, kale for maybe some castings. But what are you going to do with it in the winter? Yeah. Because you have to have a place where you can take the spent mats and put it outside, and that's something I really want to do is is have an indoor system with earthworms and they eat they use the spent mats and that but I'm not there yet this is still a new house for me and I haven't figured out all those logistics and your little core uh, fabric that biodegrades and you don't reuse it you don't reuse it it's made out of grass and how this long how expensive is it I bought this it seems to me like I bought this big sheet, which will probably do me till next winter. I mean, it's huge. It's huge. Um, I hate to guess. It wasn't very much. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing less than twenty dollars. Okay. And but so the difference between that and just letting the roots mat together is, instead of the roots just forming your mat and using this grass mat instead, the difference is. I don't know because the only thing I've ever, let me think. I have done it with just the roots massing, but it was when there was a hole and it was the biggest mess I ever made. Okay. But I've never tried it, tried doing it without this and just letting, just letting the seeds form their own mat. See, I, I like how the mat kept this, kept the seeds wet okay because I only had to water once in the morning and I didn't have to check them at night so they're a little bit bitter does that mean that they I shouldn't eat the seed no does it mean I should eat the whole thing and it's just okay that it's bitter it's okay that it's bitter because that's really not this is really not a the variety that a person would buy for doing pea sprouts okay this is a field pea and mm -hmm. what you really want to do is the gray sugar pea. Right. If if you want the gourmet one, you'll go with the gray sugar pea. But I do see that I'm coming back and continuing to pick <laughs> at it. Even though. Well, don't you think that your girls would just kind of... Oh, yeah. It's kind of Moorish because it feels so alive. And do you notice how alive it feels mm -hmm. and happy? It's not like... And the seed is different. the best part. And you notice that we just kind of sit here and go, yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to sit here and pick at the peas. Yeah. So I see that this is a winner. Yeah. One other thing I wanted to show you, I picked up this pretty thing. Hmm, that is pretty. Where'd you get it? Isn't this pretty? I got it at the, at the thrift store, okay. and it was a dollar, and I just think it's gorgeous. And I'm thinking that if I put some of the grass, the grass, mm -hmm. in the bottom of this. Look like a chia plant? And then it would be pretty kind of in my window, and I was going to try the window thing. Yeah. But... Yeah, let's find your copy of your book and we'll show them what... The, Mom always improves upon a system when she learns it. So there was a book and she has been doing microgreens and other... And she's been sprouting since... How old was I when? Eight? Since I was eight? Because she did them in the window in the basement at the Red Brick House. Oh, we did. We, did we had wheat, a whole we wheatgrass. room of wheatgrass because my aunt had cancer. And my mom grew wheatgrass for her to make wheatgrass juice and it... Really, really, really helped her. But we had a full, full room in the basement 
that had light that came in. Did you use lights too? Didn't you just have I them in the shelf? I did not use lights. Yeah. They just came in with natural light and it was adequate. Yeah. And so it just depends on, on, I wasn't willing to have this, this in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I love it being in here actually. But the other things that if people are interested, if you want to grow your own greens and you want to do it cheap, buckwheat is excellent. Okay. And sunflower sprouts are excellent. And you use, I think I've got some here. You can just get the ones that are at the grocery store that are the black oil ones that you feed your birds uh -huh. that are cheap. I, I'm going to compare them with these organic ones. Would you worry? I would be worried about getting them from a store and then eating them raw because of uh, chemical pesticides and stuff residue. Would, the, are you, would you be concerned? Well, I've done it before and I wasn't and I was fine and I thought they were delicious. And okay. I grew them in soil and they had soil on top of them. It wasn't this system. And so with this system where I see what people do is that they eat them. And they enjoy the whole plant. And there's no ick factor from dirt. And there's no ick factor from dirt. I would probably, well, obviously I would use the organic because that's what I bought. What does Dad so, think of it? Does he nibble off of them? Nobody knows about this but you and I because I oh. haven't told people because I didn't want it. I want you to be able to show your viewers. Cool. So, and I had one other thing I wanted yes, to brag. It's this right here. This is only $40. And well, it that's works. Huge. And it works. And it's a manual wheatgrass juicer. And I just wanted people to know that it's available and it's excellent. Did you find it on Amazon? Where'd you find it? So it's by Lexin uh, Healthy Juicer Wheatgrass Juicer. It looks almost exactly like the one we used when I was a kid. Yes, but, but, one plastic. That we, but ours that we had as a kid was was tin. It was. And and I always felt like there was a metal situation there going was. on there mm -hmm. with it. And this is not. And so this is, feel how lightweight it is. Yeah, it looks like and it's so, just not a big deal. So it does, you don't have to um, have the big elaborate machinery and all this if you're a person who wants to get into some real greens. Right. And some real dense nutrition. So even if you this didn't have a backyard. Dense nutrition that is so amazing. Even if you didn't have a balcony, all you had was an apartment, you could do this. And Absolutely. you wouldn't even have to have the lights. You could just put it in front of yes. a window. And that's what that book that you have says. And I'm not convinced that you still have to use the dirt. Uh, he said that the dirt, that, that the seeds worked, but that they preferred the flavor of it if it was in dirt. That's all well, he said. So we'll, so we'll have an update with this and we'll do it again. And I will do it with some earthworm castings mm -hmm. and some kelp. And I'll even do half lentil, half peas again with the same seed. And you can taste it and see. Okay. And if anybody ever sees one of these at the thrift store. It will save your life when you're spreading greens. I love this. I, I, don't, I think I've had it five or six years. I bought two of them. And it is the best thing for soaking because you just put them in there and soak and strain it off. And, and it's my workhorse in here. And I love that. So I've told you all I know.